What's up everybody, I'm James Withing and today's video is all about how to prepare for your tattoo session. Okay, so today's video is a very important one. Today we're basically just gonna be talking about all the different things that you should be considering or doing before your actual tattoo appointment on the day of. Now, today is a really optimal time for me to discuss this subject because I myself just got tattooed a few days ago and uh, you know all this stuff is really fresh in my mind in terms of the things that I considered and thought about when I was uh, rushing and scrambling trying to get all my shit together before I arrived at the shop that I was gonna get tattooed at. So this video, you know, we're going to be running over a bunch of different subjects and topics and stuff, uh, discussing a bunch of different things, but it's going to be a really great, uh, you know, checklist, so to speak, for you to kind of review before your session, whether you're somebody that's getting your very first tattoo or whether you're somebody that's had a lot of tattoos, but just don't really want to stress and worry about whether or not there's anything you forgot before you actually show up for your appointment. Okay, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it. The first topic with regards to what you should be thinking about before you prepare for your tattoo session that we're gonna discuss is the topic of homeostasis. So when people ask me like during a consult what they should do to prepare for their session, this is usually the first thing that I talk to them about. And what I mean by homeostasis is basically like your ability to just feel comfortable in your own body and not really want for anything in terms of like essential physical needs during the session, uh, you know, that might if you do feel that discomfort, they might add on to the pain that you're already experiencing just by getting a tattoo. So what I mean by that is like, you know, you don't want to be tired during your tattoo session. You want to make sure you get a good night's sleep beforehand. You don't want to be hung over, so definitely don't go out drinking the night before. Uh, you don't want to be hungry during your tattoo session because believe it or not, that's one of the biggest factors that influences how much pain you feel uh, from the needle. So you really want to make sure that you eat a very sustaining meal before your session such as something carb heavy like pizza, pasta, a big sandwich or something like that. And really you wouldn't believe how much that helps with the amount of pain that you experience. And the reason I say like a sustaining meal, like a heavier meal is because it is likely that you're gonna be sitting for very long periods of time unless you're getting a very small tattoo. You're gonna be sitting there for a while without a whole lot of opportunities to just kind of eat whenever uh, you have the urge to. So definitely make sure you eat a big meal. Uh, also related to that, it might be a smart idea to bring some sort of snacks or drinks with you to your tattoo sessions so you kind of have them on deck um, just in case you do get a little bit hungry and there's not an opportunity for you to take a break and eat. So you're going to want to bring something like, I don't know, some cereal bars, protein bars, something like that. Maybe some fruits. Those definitely help a lot because they have both carbs and sugar and maybe some sort of a sports drink. Like a lot of my clients, they tend to bring Gatorade or something similar to that so that it has a little bit of electrolytes in there, it's also hydrating them, and it has a little bit of sugar to get their blood sugar up, which is really, really important, especially if you have uh, a tendency to have a vasovagal response to the process of like uh, getting poked with a needle or something where you pass out, that sort of thing. <clears throat> it definitely can help quite a bit in uh, preventing that sort of situation. While I'm on this topic, it's probably also important to discuss the usage of drugs and alcohol. A lot of people, when they're like getting ready to go in for their tattoo session, they think that it's a good idea to have a couple of drinks before they go just to kind of loosen up, uh, get rid of the nerves that are involved with getting a new tattoo, and also maybe to dampen the pain before they go. But you know, there's definitely a lot of reasons not to drink before your session. Um, a lot of people think that it thins the blood and makes it a little bit harder for your body or skin to retain ink. But to me, the more important risk of drinking alcohol before you go for a tattoo session is going to be that if you drink alcohol, it could get out of hand and you could either start getting too drunk before your session, which is going to make you move around a lot more and not really care a whole lot about, you know, how the tattoo turns out, you know, getting more obnoxious, not staying still, annoying the artist, all those types of things. Um, you know, or it could just make it so that you take a lot more bathroom breaks or if you stop drinking, it can make it so that you need to keep on drinking unless, you know, you want to deal with the come down of it and then that disrupts your homeostasis that really will make your session very unenjoyable afterwards. So, you know, maybe you could have one shot of whiskey or something like that, but in my opinion, it's probably not smart to have any drinks at all. You want to just come in totally clear-headed, 
um, totally focused and feeling good overall for the session. With regards to drugs, it's important not to take anything that's gonna thin your blood. So, you know, obviously if you're prescribed blood thinners, you're gonna wanna to talk to your doctor before you get tattooed. And you're also gonna to wanna to consult your tattoo artist on whether or not they're comfortable tattooing you while you're on prescription blood thinners. But I'm also talking about stuff that's over the counter, such as aspirin or NSAIDs or something like that. You know, I've had clients come in and take a bunch of aspirin before they get tattooed thinking that it's gonna help them with the pain. And you know, it can pose a problem where it thins your blood out and makes your skin push more plasma out of your skin than what would be normal. And that affects your ability to hold the pigment in the skin. So it's definitely not a good thing to do that. Um, you know, as far as like, you know, prescription painkillers or smoking weed and all that stuff, that's a totally different topic that, you know, in short, I'm not really sure if it helps a whole lot with the pain. So, you know, I would just come in totally sober um, and, you know, just be confident in your own ability to sit there for a long period of time because most likely you can do it and you're going to be totally fine. So the next topic I want to talk about is identification. This should probably be a no brainer, but you're going to need a government issued photo ID when you show up for your tattoo session uh, in order for you to get tattooed. A lot of people, you know, in the past have showed up without a government issued photo ID, like with something else that's affiliated with like, I don't know, work or like some sort of other institution that's a photo ID, like a school ID or something like that. And for me, that's not enough because I feel like those IDs aren't quite as official as the ones that are like a driver's license, passport, that sort of thing. And I don't accept them. You know, likewise, I've had people show up with IDs that aren't photographic in nature where they have like just a, you know, a credit card or something like that. And they think that maybe two forms of that is going to serve as proper ID to get tattooed. But the reality is that it's a huge liability for us to tattoo somebody that doesn't have an ID. And if you're getting tattooed at a legitimate tattoo shop, you're most likely going to be refused service and might even lose your deposit if you show up unprepared to get tattooed. So make sure you have your ID with you. Make sure it's either a driver's license or a passport or something of an equivalent official nature. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about that also is going to seem like a little bit of a no brainer is going to be money. You know, obviously you want to be able to pay for your tattoo when it's concluded uh, to avoid being charged, you know, getting the cops called on you and being charged with uh, theft of service or something like that. So you really want to make sure that you're able to pay for your tattoo in the end. Now, you know, a lot of my clients that are really diehard tattoo collectors, what they do beforehand is they go to the bank and they get cash uh, before they come to their tattoo session because they know the tattoo artists mostly prefer cash um, for purposes that I probably shouldn't be discussing here on YouTube. Now, you know, some tattoo shops will accept credit cards and other form of payment. Like in my shop, we accept uh, credit card, PayPal, Apple Pay, all that sort of stuff. Um, but not all of them do. A lot of tattoo shops uh, accept exclusively cash. And, you know, it's important to bring cash with you before you go because typically if you don't bring cash with you and you're getting tattooed at a shop that only accepts cash, then your only option is to use like an ATM that's sitting in the corner of the shop that typically has a pretty high rate, like a pretty high fee that it charges you in exchange for using it. Now, if you prefer not to bring cash for whatever reason, like if you're not comfortable carrying around that amount of cash with you because uh, you're not used to it or something like that, and your tattoo shop does accept credit, then it's totally fine uh, you know, not to. It's just that we do prefer cash. And probably something that is worth talking about is credit card fraud or credit card limits or whatever um, if you're gonna be paying with that method. Now, this probably applies more to people that are traveling or like driving to another city or something like that uh, to get tattooed. It's really important that you check in with your credit card company before you do something like that to make sure that um, you clear the purchase before you go and get tattooed because oftentimes tattoo sessions can cost several hundred dollars or maybe a thousand dollars or more or something like that. And if you're traveling and you're in a different area code than where you live at or what's associated with your credit card uh, account, then it's likely that it might be perceived as fraud when you go to pay for your uh, tattoo at the end of the session. This has actually happened to me a couple of times with clients that are traveling from out of state to come get tattooed by me. And there's been like times where it was almost a nightmare scenario at the end where the client uh, had their card declined and then had to get on the phone with customer service with their credit card company and spend like an hour, hour and a half figuring things out and then getting their card reactivated while I waited for them. And it was just kind of a big um, you know, waste of time on both of our parts which you know, sucked way even more because both of us were very exhausted. It was a really, really long session. And uh, you, know, you wanna do your best to avoid a situation like that. Now, another thing uh, with regards to this topic that's worth mentioning is that you know, oftentimes tattoo artists are gonna charge hourly and you're not gonna know exactly how much to bring before you go for your session. So you know, if you are bringing cash, 
make sure that you bring more than what your tattoo artist estimated is it's going to cost in the end because sometimes you know it goes under sometimes it goes over what that ballpark estimate was as far as how much you're, you're going to be charged at the conclusion of that session um, it's also important to mention tips you know if you plan on tipping which obviously you're not obligated to do but if you do plan on tipping then bring extra money for that then give yourself a little wiggle room to where if you know if your experience was really really great and you want to tip fat you can do that but if your experience wasn't so great then you can either not tip at all or tip a smaller amount or whatever these are the things that are very smart to think about before you go and you don't want to be stuck in a situation where you know you have a thousand dollar session or something and you have to find an ATM nearby or something and leave some shit as collateral and then the ATM only gives you 500 bucks at a time and you're just like, oh, what the fuck is this? So just make sure you're prepared financially before your tattoo session. All right, so the next topic we're gonna talk about in terms of things that you wanna get done before you show up for your tattoo session is gonna be aftercare products. Now, you know, every tattoo artist has different things that they like to do for aftercare or at least a lot of tattoo artists have different methods that they prefer to use. Some people will use products like Saniderm. Some people will use, uh, you know, the conventional aftercare method, which involves like an ointment and a lotion and all that sort of shit. Some tattoo artists have their own products that they uh, will sell to you at the conclusion of their session. It will be like all natural shit that has different oils and stuff like that. So it's important to ask your tattoo artist, um, you know, what products to use for aftercare before your session. And if your tattoo artist uses the conventional method or if you can't find out uh, what type of method they prefer to use, then it's probably safe to say that you're gonna be needing a few products that I'm about to mention right now. So one is definitely gonna be Aquaphor. Aquaphor is an ointment that is gonna be used during the early stage of your healing process, probably like the first three days or something like that. Uh, another one's gonna be lotion. You're gonna wanna get some sort of non-scented lotion such as Lubriderm uh, before your session. And you're also gonna wanna get an antibacterial soap that has minimal ingredients and fragrances such as Dial Gold. Now, you know, I'll discuss in a separate video how to use all these products and how to apply the universal like conventional aftercare method or whatever, but these three products are probably important to get before your tattoo session. And the reason why is because if you're sitting there for a really long time, like if you're in there for like an eight hour session and you've already been in the shop for like 11 hours or something, getting prepped, doing the design and all that stuff, by the time you leave, it could be very late at night and you're probably gonna be really exhausted and zonked from getting tattooed, you know, both physically, emotionally, all that sort of stuff, you're gonna be um, definitely very tired after the session. And, you know, in my personal experience, like there was one tattoo session that I had where, you know, I already know what to get and I thought that I had all the products, but when I was driving home at like one in the morning or whatever, I realized that I was missing one thing. I think I was missing Aquaphor or something like that. And it really sucks to have to go to a grocery store or a pharmacy or like a drugstore or something and you know ask the customer service people or the counter people where aquaphor is and go up and down these aisles and shit looking at all these shelves full of hundreds of products when you're in that really exhausted state that really sucked for me so now at this point i pretty much will give like a little aftercare package at the end of every tattoo to my clients to avoid them having that situation but not every tattoo artist does that nor are they obligated to do that so it might be a good idea for you to go ahead and get it handled beforehand. That way at the end of the night, you don't have to go through that discomfort of obtaining those products, or maybe you make the decision to uh, skip the aftercare for the night because you're too tired to go and get those products, which is definitely not a good thing for your tattoo. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about that you should be considering before you go in for your tattoo session is how you're gonna keep yourself entertained during the session. So like I just said earlier, you're probably gonna be sitting there for a long time unless you're getting a very small tattoo. And it can be quite boring sometimes, especially if you have the type of tattoo artist that really likes to focus in on their work and doesn't really uh, you know, multitask in the way of communicating with you and kind of telling fucking jokes and just laughing and having a regular discussion while you're getting your piece done, you know? Some tattoo artists like myself, you know, I'm a chatterbox. I sit there and talk to my clients the whole time. So it's not really necessary for them to bring like a tablet or headphones or those sort of things. But other tattoo artists, like I've been tattooed by people that want to wear the headphones themselves while they're tattooing just so they can really get in the zone and be very efficient when they're getting their work done. And there's no problem with that on their end. But on your end, you want to make sure that you don't get stuck in a situation where you are staring at a wall basically for six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 hours or whatever during a long tattoo session. So it's really smart to bring those things that I just mentioned, like some sort of headphones, earbuds, um, you know, obviously you want to make sure your phone is charged, bring chargers with you before you go for your tattoo session. 
You might want to bring uh, a tablet or something. While I'm on the subject of entertainment and electronics and things like that, I know I just mentioned to bring some chargers and stuff with you uh, when you go for your session, but it's also important to consider um, internet when you are getting tattooed. You know, some shops have really shitty Wi-Fi where you're going to be getting like a lot of like drop connections, lost signals, all that sort of stuff. So it might be a good idea to bring like a little hotspot if you have one, if you know, you have electronics on that level, or it also might be a good idea just to download some content onto your electronic device, onto your, like your uh, laptop, your phone, your tablet or whatever. Have some movies already downloaded like on Netflix or something like that so that you have something to do, you know, download all your songs on Spotify. That way, uh, you know, you're not there frustrated because you have, you came prepared with the electronic device, but because of a loss of internet connection or a lack of internet connection, you're not able to utilize it fully. It might be a good idea to bring some sort of a stress object, like something for you to squeeze on, like a stress ball or something like that. Uh, because if you're getting a tattoo in a very painful area, sometimes when the needle touches your skin or when the tattoo artist is, um, you know, doing something really precise in the tattoo, there's an urge to kind of cringe away from the tattoo or move or wiggle your feet around or something like that. And if you have something in your hand that you can squeeze to kind of release that tension, then you know it can really help you in staying still in the area of your body that you're actually getting tattooed during that whole process. All right, so the next thing I wanna discuss is a couple of guidelines for bringing company with you when you go and get tattooed. You know, it can definitely be a good thing to bring a friend with you when you go and get your piece done, uh, just in case, you know, your artist is very introverted and doesn't really talk a whole lot. You know, you might have somebody to sit there next to you and comfort you, or maybe just have a conversation with to entertain you while you're getting your piece done so that you're not bored. Or they might be able to help in other ways, such as, you know, going and getting you a beverage if you run out of things to eat or drink, or if, you know, they want to run out and get you a nice meal instead of just having a little protein bar snack or something like that. They can be extremely helpful in that type of situation. But, it's important to mention that you wanna bring the right type of people with you when you go and get tattooed. You know, in my opinion, it's good, it's a good idea to limit it to only one person, one friend that you bring with you, or one family member or whatever, because if you bring like your whole squad and entourage, then typically um, the energy level in the, in the tattoo situation can become a lot higher and more stressful than what it needs to be. And what I mean by that is like, I've observed it many, many times over the course of my career, where if people bring several friends, Sometimes they'll bring, uh, you know, a bunch of people and those people will hype the situation up hella to where they're like teasing you, making fun of you, you know, kind of like looking for that reaction where they want you to kind of wince and hurt and whine and complain and all that sort of stuff. And in some way, I almost feel like clients want to appease their friends in that situation. So they kind of play into it a little bit and they'll like make it seem like it's hurting more than it really does just for the sake of entertaining their friends or whatever. But, you know, as the tattoo artist, that can be really detrimental to the situation because oftentimes people are gonna move around more when they're doing that sort of stuff or they're gonna be like turning their head to look at all their different friends and when they turn their head, they're moving their body and it makes it really difficult for me as the tattooer to focus, not only because of that, but also because there's many, many people with all this different chatter and different threads of conversations going on at the same time it can, and it can just be like distracting and not really uh, you know, conducive with what would be considered ideal um, for a tattoo situation or from being able, to, being able to focus fully. So, you know, definitely only limited to one friend. Um, you want to bring the type of friend that is going to be less of like the antagonizing friend that teases you and shit, which, you know, those are good friends too. I like friends that clown around and pop jokes and make fun of you and shit. Stuff's fucking funny. But in a tattoo situation, you want the person that's like the nurturer to be with you, if that makes any sense. Um, you want to be some, you want to bring somebody that is very low energy, somebody that can take a back seat in the process and not be right there like trying to control aspects of the tattoo process such as like the design and like looking over the tattoo artist's shoulder and doing all that sort of shit. Because if you bring somebody that's like a big, big time like extroverted control freak with you, like somebody like me, then it's often, you know, it's very possible that oftentimes they're gonna be uh, distracting the tattoo artist and making it difficult for their, them to do their job. When in reality, they have no business like trying to get involved in what's going on with the tattoo because it's not their piece. They're not the one doing it they're not the one receiving it. So try to bring somebody that's gonna play more of a support role rather than bringing somebody that has a more take control type of attitude because that's gonna disagree with the entire process. Now, as far as like the whole looking over the shoulder and trying to control the situation thing, um, it's probably important to mention like significant others. Like, you know, if you bring your boyfriend or your girlfriend, 
Um, oftentimes they're gonna add a little bit of a weird vibe to the whole situation that in my opinion is undesirable for the tattoo artist too. And this particularly happens with girls that bring their boyfriends. I don't really know what it is about tattoo shops or tattoo artists, but every time a girl brings their boyfriend or at least the majority of the time that they bring their boyfriend for the actual tattoo, the boyfriend becomes like extremely insecure and for some reason like, I don't know, tries to act like they're regulating me or something and like they're making sure I do a good job and all that type of shit. Or they'll just like have a weird like dick measuring contest where they'll try to like, I don't know, just like be weird and one uppy in the conversation or maybe take jabs at me or something like that. Or just do things to try to like subtly assert their dominance in the situation. It's like, bro, fucking, I know that you're uncomfortable because I'm right here tattooing your girlfriend. You don't even like anybody being within a three foot bubble of her and you're real jealous and shit. But that's not really my problem. She chose to come here and pay me for this service. And besides, I have a fucking girlfriend anyway. I don't give a fuck about your girlfriend, you know? But what I'm trying to say is that it's probably something that you should consider if you feel like your boyfriend is the jealous type. Like maybe don't bring them or maybe bring them for a short period of time, like in the beginning, but then have them bounce afterwards. That way all the energy in the room is just real calm and there's no tension or any weird shit like that. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is like timing, you know what I'm saying? Like punctuality, that sort of thing. Um, obviously it's important to be on time for your tattoo session. You know, you don't wanna show up late. Oftentimes if a tattoo artist um, is sitting there for anything longer than 15 minutes or 30 minutes and a client shows up late, you know, the tattooer might not tattoo them because they no longer have time to tattoo them and might require them to put down a new deposit before they continue on with that piece. Or sometimes the tattooer might already be doing another tattoo. If your tattoo is very small and you showed up half an hour late or something like that, you might have, you know, missed that train and there's no opportunity for you to get your piece at this, uh, at this point. So, you know, you definitely want to show up early or right on time for your tattoo appointment. And a really great way to do that is going to be to use like Google Maps when you're prepping for your tattoo session, when you're getting all your shit together. Uh, before you leave and see how long it's going to take that day um, for you to go from point A to point B from where you live to your tattoo session and try to you know manage your time accordingly. Now another reason why I'm mentioning this subject is because what you don't want to do is show up way too early for your tattoo session. So I'm not talking about like 10 minutes early. I'm not talking about 15 minutes early. I'm talking about a situation where you show up you know half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour early for your appointment. That can be um, you know, undesirable for the tattoo artist because it adds a lot of pressure to the situation where they might be like right there trying to casually be creative and design something in a really relaxed state. But then if you show up hella hella early and they have to greet you and deal with this social situation when the design is not complete and everything, they can kind of create a lot of unwanted or unneeded pressure um, on the part of the tattoo artist and make it a little bit harder for them to put a design together efficiently. So, you know, this happened to me quite a bit of times in my career where people will show up like 45 minutes early and the design that I have, like I'm still preparing it so it doesn't really look like a whole lot and they wanna see their design and then I'm self-conscious about it because I know it's not done yet and you know, they might have input about the design before I even, even decided that that's exactly what I wanna tattoo on them or how I wanna tackle the project and you know, it's, it's kinda awkward when they're sitting on the couch right there um, you know, or looking over my shoulder or something like that and trying to control the process as it's happening. So, you know, every task artist works differently. Some people like to do it to where they design the entire thing with the client right there side by side with them. Some of them like to kind of be off in a little corner just doing their own thing because that is, you know, to them that might be a higher pr pressure situation than actually executing the tattoo. So, you know, long story short, it's probably a good idea to show up only 10 or 15 minutes early Maybe the exception to this would be if you live very, very far away or if you're traveling, you know, from another city or something like that. Um, you know, in that situation, if you're driving from two hours across town to come and see me, if you show up half an hour early, it's totally understandable. But I would definitely prefer it if people only showed up like 10 or 15 minutes early at the most. So the next thing on the checklist of things that I want to discuss is going to be hygiene. So, you know, this is also going to be a no brainer for some people, but it's definitely something that should be talked about because there have been a lot of times when clients have showed up for appointments with me where they didn't have their hygiene in order and had like crazy BO or something like that and it made it really difficult for me to enjoy tattooing them. Now, you know, you might be thinking, well, what the fuck does it matter if you're comfortable? 
that matters that the tattooer is comfortable because if they are uncomfortable in that situation because you stink hella, then it's more likely that they're gonna be kind of rushing through your tattoo because they just can't stand it very much longer. And you really want the tattooer to not be distracted by anything like that so that they can focus fully on what they're doing. Now, most tattoo artists wouldn't even mention something like this to you. They might just go ahead and get through the project as fast as possible, keep their head down and just work through it without really talking to you a whole lot. You know, some other tattooers might be different though. They might have a little bit more of a hard nose approach to when it comes to this sort of thing. And it's possible you can be refused service if you don't come, you know, with proper hygiene ready to get tattooed, which, you know, would suck for both you and the tattoo artist. So make sure you do that. Make sure that you don't overdo it in the opposite direction and wear like way too much perfume or cologne or something to where it makes it hard for the tattoo artist to focus. You know, some tattooers um, might be, have, have like a sensitivity to that sort of thing and they might think that it smells way, way more uh, powerful or strong than you do, and that might be sneezing and unable to focus because of that during the tattoo. So my advice is don't wear any perfume, don't wear any cologne, just wear deodorant and you should be fine. With regards to hygiene, it's also important to talk about whether or not you should put lotion on the area that you're gonna get tattooed, and whether or not you should shave yourself before your tattoo session. Now, I prefer that clients don't put any lotion on the skin that's gonna get tattooed before they come for the session. The reason why is because the lotion almost creates like an oily layer on the skin that will prevent the stencil from binding totally to the skin when I put it on there because it's like a little barrier in between them. So, you know, this can be particularly important with like realistic tattoos where I'm not like outlining everything and then wiping it all down, wiping the stencil away and then coloring it afterwards. It's really uh, important that I'm able to preserve the stencil as long as possible and lotion can definitely interfere with that process even if I clean the skin off really thoroughly with rubbing alcohol and soap. With regards to shaving, you know, a lot of clients will come in with the area they're gonna get tattooed already shaved and they, you know, usually are like the, the best clients where they're super considerate and that's why they're doing it is because they wanna make my job easier. But this is something that I don't prefer clients do and the reason why is because when I shave the skin as the tattoo artist, which is my job, you know, I prepare everything and get it all ready to get tattooed. When I shave the skin, I'm paying a lot of attention to how much I'm going over certain things with the razor to make sure that I'm not causing razor burn and irritating the skin. Um, and if I do go over an area quite a bit, I know in my head that that area can, you know, take a little bit less punishment in terms of how much trauma it can handle before it gets overworked than other areas in that, uh, on that part of the body. So if a client comes in and they shave themselves, I don't really know how much they went over it with the razor and it's hard for me to estimate whether or not you know the skin uh, is fit to be tattooed because if they did kind of irritate their skin quite a bit and I don't know that and then I tattoo it, then they might end up having a less than ideal heel on the tattoo and I might not have any idea why. Not only that, but it's also possible for the, a client that shaves themselves to like nick themselves or cut themselves in a really crucial area of that body part, maybe where like the eyeball of a face or something like that is gonna go. And oftentimes it can ruin the entire original tattoo idea to where now I have to place it on another area of the body, or I might even have to reschedule them and then have them come back for a session on a later date. And that's definitely not desirable. So don't shave yourself, just leave that up to your tattoo artist. You know, if they're anything like me, they like to have more control over the situation and be responsible and accountable for every aspect of it. And that definitely includes what happens with the razor. Okay, so I feel like I've covered all the topics I wanna to cover and I feel like I have discussed this subject very comprehensively. And as a result, this is probably gonna be a fairly long video. So what I'm gonna do at the end right here is instead of you know having you guys rewind through the video and try to um, you know review the information so you can create your own checklist or whatever, I'm just gonna rattle off a bunch of the things that I had in my little outline right here that I used, that I wrote up before I, uh, decided to film the video. That way you guys just have it all like in a really short snippet where you can just write stuff down and make your own checklist from there. So here we go with that. The first thing that, you're wanna, that you wanna consider is gonna be homeostasis. So obviously you wanna make sure that you are, uh, that you've slept well, that you're well fed before your session, that you're hydrated, that you bring snacks and all that stuff with you. Uh, you wanna make sure you come in sober and prepared to get tattooed. You wanna make sure that your uh, aftercare stuff is already all purchased and at your house. Uh, before your tattoo session, that way you don't have to get it after you uh, conclude your tattoo. Make sure your finances are in order. Make sure you have cash, uh, you, that you've already gone to the bank and gotten that cash, if that's what you decide to do. Uh, make sure that you bring your ID with you. Make sure you have entertainment, like headphones, electronics, you know, your phone, tablet, all that stuff. Bring chargers for those things. If you feel like you're gonna have a particularly painful tattoo session, consider bringing a stress object. 
Uh, make sure you contact the friend that you decide to bring with you and that they're available for the tattoo and that you've selected that friend uh, appropriately for a tattoo. Also make sure that your hygiene is in order, that you're clean, that you don't wear any uh, perfumes or colognes, that you don't put any lotion on the area that's gonna get tattooed, and also that you don't shave the area yourself that's gonna get tattooed. Make sure that you know how much time it's gonna take to get from wherever you're at to the tattoo shop so you can show up on time. Make sure that you have appropriate clothing for the tattoo, that the clothing is comfortable, that the clothing uh, is accessible for the tattoo artist for the area that you're gonna get tattooed, that it's clothing that you really don't care about, getting ink splatter on, and also an extra article of clothing to help you regulate your body temperature. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, a lot of people ask me about this when they are uh, consulting with me and scheduling an appointment. So people that have questions about that, uh, that are my clients, I'm probably gonna be directing them towards this video so that they can form a checklist and kinda make sure they have all the information they need before they come and get tattooed by me. Uh, if you guys like this video, please uh, go ahead and hit the like button below. If you guys wanna check out pictures of my tattoos on Instagram, it is at jameswithytattoo. And also it might be a good idea to save this video if uh, you're viewing it long before your tattoo session. That way you can review it again maybe a couple of hours before you leave just to make sure that you're refreshed and you're not forgetting anything that was mentioned in this video. But in any case, I really hope uh, you guys have a great day and I thank you for watching.